we go. Hey. What's up? We are live. Just in time for me to light this cigar. Me too. Me too. I'm going to light this uh, beautiful Alma del Fuego. Alma del Fuego. Which one? Our box Panatella. The Panatella. That's such a amazing cigar, man. I still remember IPCPR when I first tried that cigar. Yeah, it was a memorable cigar. That's why we had to get it very, very quickly to all the members. I'm lighting this, uh, the Reserva 1898. This is the European exclusive blend. And this is actually the stick that we're uh, doing giveaways on today with every purchase. So I think we have some folks joining up. Yep, we do. Kevin, what's going on? Carl, what's up, Carl? Welcome, right everybody. So, right on time, Carl. So we, uh, we're we going to give it just a few more minutes to let people join. Um, while we're letting people join, I will start going over some of the deals that we're going to be doing today. So today, any five cigars you buy at LuxuryCigarClub.com, you're going to re receive one of the Reserva 1898 European exclusives with your purchase. Any 10 Placencia cigars that you purchase, you will get three of the Reserva 1898 European exclusives. Um, of course, we will have some goodies to throw in. I think we have some stickers and some matches from Placencia as well. So we'll get that all done for you. We have basically the full line on the site and in stock. So, uh, you know, while we're live is when your purchase um, counts towards this benefit. As soon as you, as soon as we're not live anymore, this, uh, this is the end. Uh, what's up, Zip? What is going on, Larry? Welcome back. We appreciate having hey, both of you. Hey, Zip. So, without further ado, Ben, who do we have with us today? We have a very special guest, and we have Nestor Placencia of Placencia Cigars, a, a, a great guy, and without further ado... There he is. Nestor, welcome. Hey, guys. How are hey. you? Great. How are you? I'm doing amazing, man. I'm enjoying life no matter what. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for letting me talk about our, our, our company, our cigars with your with your viewers. So it's a pleasure to be with you guys. Thank you for the invitation. You're very welcome. So where, where are you right now, Nestor? I'm in Esteli, Nicaragua in the in our cigar, in our cigar factory. Uh, we're in the Placenta Cigar Factory here. We're still working. Uh, at 6, 6 p.m., and uh, people people still working, making great cigar for all of you. Yeah, I'm assuming I did I did my homework just a little bit, and you uh, you guys do 40, 40 million cigars a year, right? Yes, yes, that's uh, we've been we've been doing this for a lot of years. We have uh, the benefit to have a lot of uh, a lot of friends in this industry that give their brands to us and that we can we make their cigars and as well we do the placencia line uh here here in uh in the factory that's great can you can you disclose some of those friends you don't have to uh, just out of no no curiosity. i i i can do it no problem we do cigar for alec bradley uh we do cigar for rocky patel we do cigar for uh nat chairman we do cigar for regis regis cigars uh, we do cigar for Crocs, we do cigar for many, many, many people that, you know, that count on us and, and give their, their brands and we make it together with them. So it's a, it's a great teamwork, you know, it's amazing people in the industry that have been in the industry for many years and, uh, and also new, new people that have a lot of passion that we said, you know, that we can be, can be good for them. Uh, so we make cigars together. You, you, of, you guys have cigars for for thirty different brands, right? Yeah, yeah, about thirty. And I know I saw, and I've had actually, and I really enjoyed it. You you did a Davidoff exclusive stick, right? Yes, we so, did a Davidoff special. That was a placenta for Davidoff of Geneva. 
uh, that we do especially for the Davidoff shops in the in the United States, uh, Davidoff of Geneva, and that was a great that was a great success, and we honored you know to be to be working with those lines and. And we make uh, uh, Monte Cristo, we make uh, Romeos as well, you know, that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, branch of the one that we're doing. Oh, everything. And you've been doing it for many years. And in fact, uh, your factory is the oldest factory in the world right now? Well, uh, we've, been, we've been growing tobacco for many years. We started growing tobacco the in company. 1965. And uh, so we are, I think we're the old, oldest tobacco company still that is family owned. Uh, but we started making cigars in 1985 and when we started making cigars. The first cigars we, we, we started making in, that was in, in Honduras. Uh, and we started very little. The 80s was very hard time because we had to move from Nicaragua to Honduras and start all, all over again. Yeah, so, but my dad is an amazing, is amazing human being, a hardworking guy that has been able to, to work hard and never, and never quit, uh, no matter the circumstances, he keeps going, and he's been able to, to grow one of the biggest uh, cigar companies in the world, so it's a family owned, which is, which is good. Can we, can, can I ask you just briefly, for people that didn't do homework like us, and to give <laughs> us that. The family history back from 1865 to today, just uh, you know, on the surface, kind of. Uh, oh, yeah. will be will be my pleasure. You know, will be my pleasure. We started in 1865. Uh, the love story for the Pacencia brand with tobacco. Uh, it's a story of love. It's a story of passion, and it's a story of resilience, because we've been doing we've been through many many hard times. Uh, starting in, 18, in 1865, going to back in a very in a very small scale. Scale. Then uh, we start growing the business. My great grandfather start growing the business, uh, and then uh, his son start working with him. So he was able to grow the, a very nice sized business in in a hundred years. Because in 1965, they had to lose everything in Cuba because of the revolution. So we have to move to Undu, to Nicaragua in that in those days, because uh, my father was 15 years old during those during those times. So he finished agriculture school and then he started uh, working with my grandfather. Very little, you know. The first they start working for some other people, and then we grow the business in a nice size in Nicaragua, and the revolution came to Nicaragua. So we have to move to Honduras. So we lost everything twice. Starting from scratch twice, so I've been raised listening to those stories of hard work, of never get never quick. You know, those, those are being the mantra of the family. So we start grow, uh, growing, we, we, and we never skip any crop. So we've been growing tobacco for 154 years in a row. Never, never skip, never skip any crop. So you you've harvested 154. How many crops have you harvested? We are in the 154 crop right now. We're finishing in. We're gonna finish about uh, in about a month or a month and a half. We'll be finishing the 154 crop, and we'll be ready for 155 crop. This is gonna be starting in uh, September. So it's a uh, it's a great it's a great feeling, you know, being in this amazing industry for so many years, and and we're the fifth generation. And as I said, uh, my brothers and my sister, we all of us are in the business. And I always said, you know, that the responsibility for our generation is to let everybody know what our ancestors have worked, have been thrived through those hard times, and put the Placencia name into the market. This is the thing that we that we want that we want to accomplish right now. So That's everything that we have that we have learned in this in so many years, we put it into this uh, amazing cigar that we're very proud of. To, to take into the market and thank you guys to to tell us let us ex explain the word and tell a little bit of the history and 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 um, supply and you give the cigar to your to your consumers. Well, in our book right now, I think uh, I'm sure Chris will agree, and I'm pretty sure everybody watching this will agree. Placencia can pretty much do no wrong. Every cigar that's coming out. Uh, with, with your name on it has absolutely been phenomenal 
uh, since I can remember. So you are doing something amazing. And for example, uh, this cigar, like I was saying before, uh, which we first tasted at IPCPR last year, and we were talking about, I think, even in another show a couple of weeks ago about how many cigars we smoked uh, during the show. And even though, you know, you get numb a little bit and, and all the cigars kind of blend and the taste blend. But when once we had this, it was like all of us just looked at each other, all three of us, Chris, David and I, and we we're like, wow, this is phenomenal. And it's, it stands you. out. I think Thank you, though. Those comments are what we work for, you know. We we, we we choose the name Alma, which means soil, soul, and and our goal is to light up your soul every time that you light one of our cigars. So, when I heard that, you know, I, I every comment, any testimonials about our cigar, for me, that's even better than a than a good rating that we have for 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 you know for magazines stuff like that. When I heard about uh, customers reviews. And those and those things, you know, that makes my soul proud. Thank you. No, it, it's a fantastic cigar. I know. I think it's the only cigar we actually purchased at the show. I think most of our purchases we made after the fact, but we absolutely had to have this. We had to be the. I think we were one of the first ones to ship it, and we we were uh, in love with it. I love Omotepe tobacco in general, but this. The way that you've done the omatete in this blend the, is really unique. It's not overpowering. You get that really yeah. earthy leatherness that I love out of that omatete. And, and it comes through so amazingly. And especially in that flama, you know, that, that uh, panatella vitola. It's, it's a really, really great cigar. So let me ask you, do you, Nestor, or your brothers, do you guys blend the cigars? Or do you have a blender? Who blends the, the Placencia cigars? Everything that we do, Chris, is uh, it's a teamwork. You know, we have we have a group of experts here in the factory that's been with us for many many years. We are part of the blending team. Uh, we put our inputs. Uh, we learn. We listen to other people. We try our cigars. We want to uh, we want to agree in in the blend. But I want everybody to be part of that in order to uh, be be partnership. You know, of, of this of the of the uh, process of make these great blends. I, I always said, you know, that everything that we can that we accomplish is a teamwork. So we we're a big part of that. My father, myself, uh, my cousins that are that are here as well. But the team that are that are on the farm, the team that are on the fermentation room, the team that are on the on the rolling uh, uh, department, you know, it's a teamwork. We 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 do and we love to have like a team like a teamwork. And we want to agree when we land, when we have a, a a new blend in the market, we want to actually absolutely be in love with that blend, you know, That's because this is thing. this is something that is uh, that is dependent on us 100 percent, different than that we make a private label that we're very proud of that contribute to the private label, but in a Placencia name, it's 100 percent on us, you know. We pick the we pick the sizes, we pick the the blend, we pick the packaging, we pick everything. So if something goes wrong, it's on us. If something go, goes well, it's on us as well. But it's a teamwork. Absolutely, no, it, it makes sense. Um, so I want I wanted to just go back for a minute to talk about. So first, uh, Castro, you guys left when in Cuba, right? The family left when Castro came in and as many, many of the prolific uh, tobacco families, cigar yes. families did. And then you settled in Nicaragua, correct? Yes. We start, we start, we start over in Nicaragua and start working with other companies that my grandfather got a job. Little by little, they start uh, growing, uh, uh, buying a small farm. My father, my father came out of school to start growing tobacco with his, with his dad. Uh, so he, he made a nice size business. And then they have to move again out of the country because another revolution. So lost twice, lost everything twice. So I, I was when I was reading, and I, I didn't know this about the family history, but you, you actually, your crops or the family crops were burned in Nicaragua in like 86 or 87. Is that right? Yeah, so it was, that was in the late, the late 90s. You know, to, uh, tobacco barns were, were, were burned. Because there was a, the 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 war, the civil war in the middle of that, 
so there was a there was a fire so there was a lot of uh, bad times during those days so my dad said we have to move and we move uh they moved my mom and and all of us that we were i was three years old when i have to move to honduras i remember those days uh very hard times uh but i always happy you know uh, i love that he never never showed there was a bad times happen you know so they had a had a great attitude about the things that they were happen and then we have the when we start growing tobacco in honduras you get a lawn you get a you rent a farm the blue mole came the blue mole is a disease that destroyed completely the fields so it destroyed the fields and that's the beginning of the 80s was very 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 hard time and everybody told to my daddy you have to quit you have to go and, and move to miami or whatever and my father said no nah, nah. i will always try you know people have trust in me i will do my best and uh he's been able to to work and to and to accomplish stuff and uh it's a beautiful story man i was raised listening to those stories of of my dad and my grandfather and uh you I, know I, so, i would all, yes. almost say it's the american story <laughs> it's, you, it's work, american, you work it's hard american. and you succeed that's it that's and you it. face advert uh you, you know all, all the the troubles that come and until you make it and that's what and I, you have to find you have to find the way no matter what there's no other there's no other way absolutely so, so as a result of all the moving back and forth you now have crops in honduras and in nicaragua correct yes, yes. And, and so that is probably maybe in the now it's a blessing in disguise a lot of movement a lot of turmoil but you guys have really made the best of it because i I read a statistic and maybe you can tell me if this is this is right but you you are the largest grower of tobacco in the world right for prim for primo cigars for primo cigars yes so yeah cigar tobacco is what i mean sorry yeah so so no one grows more premium cigar tobacco than the placencia family no one no one that we know and that and that uh my father said that is because of the of the hard times that we have to that we have to pass through as you said you know it's it's well it was a blessing all the stuff because that makes makes him work harder and smarter uh, be creative find ways uh get get together with great group of people that are still working with us and working together with us uh so he been able to grow and i was you know there were very hard times at the beginning but now in, in the 90s to start everything start changing because of the boom and he and he take that opportunity he started making a lot of cigars growing a lot of tobacco you know buying farms in Nicaragua we keep we keep the 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 businesses in Honduras and he says I want to be diversified because if something happened because there's a lot still a lot of political political instability so if something happened in one country you know I still I I still have resources in other country so we so we cook the 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 diversity with the uh spread it around and be, and be a lot and be a lot of more diversified yeah and, oh, with, and, and with the countries we grow in different places because you can have also diseases that can affect one place for example in Nicaragua we grow tobacco in in four places we grow tobacco in Esteli we grow tobacco in Condega we grow tobacco in Jalapa and we grow tobacco also in Ometepe in Honduras we grow tobacco in three different places as well so you know we spread you spread the the the, the risk and you diversify a little bit so you you are the fifth generation right I'm the fifth generation of the family yeah okay so uh, basically generation uh, five generation V the, the line is your line you you created it or is it just it's it's for just to, so, if you can explain so a little the, bit about, about the the salomon the alma alma uh, alma del fuerte alma fuerte alma fuerte salomon generation b yes it's like like a match you know of the we came with the crazy crazy sizes and that kind of stuff like the hexagon like the salomon box press and that kind of stuff so you know put on a little bit of the creativity in a very traditional in a very traditional industry so you know we said you know this is the this is the something that the that the fifth generation is going to add a little bit of creativity in a very traditional industry I love it I love the six-sided box press 
And uh, I love the the Salomon as well. They're 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 two fantastic cigars. They're gorgeous. Phenomenal. It's gorgeous to look I at. I think it's it's one of the club's favorite in general. Just uh, a when we sent it out, I think it was one of the the most well accepted cigars we ever ever sent. Wow, that's that's great. That's great to hear it. And the story, the story uh, is, uh, behind the hexagon. Uh, I'm I'm a farmer, you know. I'm an agronomist. Uh, I love nature, so I've been I've been studying nature for many years, and, and 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 I believe that nature is our biggest teacher. We can learn a lot from nature. And this is a new science. Well, this is a science that had been many many years ago, that calls biomimicry which means that mimic nature and they tell us that nature has been been with us for 3.8 billion years teaching us a lot of stuff and i was reading about biomimicry and i was reading about the hexagon shape and it says that the hexagon shape is the perfect the perfect shape in nature that's why the beehive hat is in the in the houses and all the stuff so i was i was thinking how we can incorporate it biomimicry into the cigar world so we did a try and error we've been we've been experimenting with different different shapes and uh, the biggest challenge how how we have the shape and the cigar not get rounded but by the time so we age the cigars in an hexagonal mold so it's, it's before we ship the cigars it's been with us for six months before we ship it and it's in it's uh aging in, in hexagonal mold so you know, trying to create, trying to create new stuff is the only hexagonal shape in the market, and it's the best seller out of the Alma Fuerte line. So, so we're we're very happy with the result. Side note, just again, our homework we did. It is actually named after, not after its shape, right? Its name is name is a combination because it's named as Sixto Seco Sixto Segundo, which is my great my grandfather. And his name was Sixto, Sixto, Six, and hexagonal shape. So you know, so we make, so we make uh, a blend to the name, and that, and, and that, and that was the idea with that. Cool, because we didn't know that. We thought we figured it was just by according to the shape, but there is a story behind it as well, which is very nice. A nice uh, uh, gesture towards him. So, so you. You, Nesta, your generation also brought the 146, the Kosheka 146, right? And that was yes. to celebrate your 146th harvest, right? The 146th harvest, which the year 2011, 2012. So that was an amazing harvest for us. And we saved tobacco for that harvest. And then that we released it when we released the cigar. And that cigar is made in an in Honduran factory. It's a blend in Honduran and Nicaraguan tobacco. So we try to do something. It's not just a, a brand. It's not just a name. We want to have incorporated something into the name, into the brand, so have a meaning. You know, have a bigger meaning in everything that we do. Like like the name Alma, for example. You know, in the name Alma, which means soul, we want to have the strong soul, the Alma Fuerte of my grandfather, my father, my great grandfather, and we also want to get into the strong soul of the people who's gonna enjoy the cigars. So our main goal is to people light up their soul every time that light up one of our cigars you know so that's 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 the meaning that we want in order to in order to have because we were we were growing tobacco we were making cigars but we were missing the best part to be close to the final consumer and the final consumer deserves a great experience with the smoking cigars so that's why we put our soul in everything that we do well we we can tell you know uh ben and i and and david the, the guys here that the own and run luxury cigar club um are very attracted to people who have passion for what they do and we believe that the product that you create when you have passion for it is is so much better and it's evident it's evident when i look at your bands when I look at your boxes, the ashtrays that come with the higher, the, 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 the Alma lines. Oh my gosh, the ashtrays. And, and, uh, they are so well made. Thank and, you. And, and the, the tobacco. I mean, Great. first of all, there's so much tobacco grown uh, by the Placentia family. You probably have the pick of the litter of some of the best tobacco in the world. But you know, I was looking at this, this, this European, this is the third or fourth time I've actually had this cigar. 
And when I pulled it out to take some photos of it, I was just admiring as you do a time, you know, when you pick up a cigar or a leaf, you admire it, it, it's, it's gorgeous. And, and you look at it and it's so well thought out that you can tell that the experience and the passion that you're trying to share it, I, I take it out of the box. I don't have to meet you. I don't have to know you. I don't have to know anything about the family. I can look at the, and I can easily, easily see that. And, and that's one thing that I personally, and I think Ben does as well, appreciate about Placencia cigars and what you guys are doing. And, and what reinforces that for me is I was at a big smoke a few years ago and you were there and, you know, there was lines everywhere and, and, you know, there was sales reps at these booths and stuff like that. And Rocky Patel showed up for a while at one of his booths, but you were there the whole time. You shook everybody's hand, you looked them straight in their face and you thanked them for, for their support, for their business, for coming out. And I was like, this guy, this guy cares. There's, there's something really special here. So I, I'm really happy that you guys got outside of the realm of making cigars for other people and growing tobacco and, and really brought your own, your own line in, into existence. And I think, I think it's going to be a household name. I mean, it already is really, I don't know a lot of people that don't know about Placencia these Thank days, you. but Thank you very much. I take any opportunity to talk to the people who really enjoy our cigars and we have the chance to enjoy it. So I don't travel that much because I spend most of my time on the farm in the factory. So every time that I have that opportunity, I want to take it and I want to be grateful for the people who actually are buying our product, you know, and are supporting this industry because of you guys and them is because we have a business. So I want to be grateful for these guys and take every opportunity that I have, like the opportunity that we have today, you know, to explain, to talk about what we do. Uh, the passion that we have in everything, you know, it's five generations. It's uh, you can say it easy, but there's been a lot of things that happen in five generations, and we still, and we still working. We still working hard. You ne we never take everything for granted. We know this is a hard market over there. It's especially these days, you know, with all this situation. But I think, and I truly believe that we make people's life better with the cigars that we're making. So people enjoy life. People can can. Uh, take the stress out uh, when, when they enjoy good cigars. So that's a bigger meaning that we put in everything that we do. No, absolutely. Uh, I think the, the people would like to know when uh, there's going to be a, an exclusive luxury cigar club uh, made by Placencia. I didn't see anybody well, ask we, it, but it will. <laughs> we, can talk, we can talk about it for sure. We have a lot of things in the pipeline. We, uh, ben, ben doesn't know this, but I've already started that communication, that conversation with some folks over at Placencia. So maybe uh, I'm spilling the beans. Ben doesn't even know that. So um, no, we, we're, we're so grateful for you and what you guys are doing. So you, you touched on something and usually, especially during this crazy time with the, the, the virus and everything that's going on, we, uh, you know, we usually try to avoid it, but it's not often that we have someone who employs 6,000 people and has eight plantations and four factories. And I really, I think, I think people might be interested to hear your perspective a little bit about how Corona has impacted the way that you do business and, and how, how things look for you guys. No, it's, it's, you know, it's challenging times and, and uh, we, we're facing, the the best way that we can the most important thing right now for us is the security of our people you know the health of our people so what we do is we we make two shifts in the production in the production area so that people can can stay and work and spread with a lot of social distancing that they required we make we 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 were masked 100 percent of the people were masked uh hand washing did, facilities did anybody anybody get sick no, not so far. So far, nothing. You know, we've been we've been helpful and, and grateful that people are taking the precautions. We we have a doctor that explaining all day long. You know, all the things, all the things that they have to do, uh, hand washing facilities, disinfectation facilities, all over. You know, and the most and the best thing that we can do is educate them, so they get this knowledge and put it into their families as well. So they cannot go out, you know, go to crowded places and stuff like that <coughs> and take care of ourselves. 
and uh, take care of the product that we're making. And uh, those, those are the main things. But I'm so proud of my team that in these in this, uh, weeks that we've been working like this, the quality of the product is even better because the rejection rate is lower. We have the people over there checking out. And I said to my guys, guys, the responsibility that we have right now in these days is even, is even higher because people will spend some of their time with cigars that we're going to make and they need a great smoking experience, a, a enjoying, a enjoying time. So imagine that they're in the middle of that stress out because of the news and this and that. So they need a time, two hours relaxation. And if they find, if they pick one of our cigars for this hour, they have to be in an amazing smoking experience. So they oh, have to enjoy it big time. So it's a big responsibility that we have right now. And they get it. And every time so after we finish this, uh, Monday, I will tell my guys, you know, these people are saying this, they're saying that. Thank you for the product that you're making. And I have in the factory here, so I, I invite you when all this craziness happened, please come and visit us. We have pictures of all the, people, the all the employees in the wall because they are the ones that are making things happen over here. So it's a teamwork, man. Wow. We'll for sure come. We will for sure wow. come. Absolutely. I will not I will not turn that down. So let's talk um, a little bit, Nestor. We have some questions coming in from some of our members, and one of the questions that they have is uh, this about this cigar, the Reserva 1898. What, what they want to know why is this only available in Europe? Uh, that cigar, good question. That cigar we've been selling in Europe for years, and uh, and we said you know we want to have something something uh, exclusive for that. They asked for that, and they said okay, we're gonna do it. Uh, they've been they've been uh, in Europe. We're doing a, an amazing an amazing. Uh, uh, job. Uh, we have our amazing people, distributors in Germany, Switzerland, uh, Austria, Spain, France, uh, the UK. I've been talking to these guys all these all these days. So we said, you know, we want uh, they want to keep it that for them. So we said we're gonna keep that for you. And uh, so that's the story. That's the story behind that cigar. And uh, and we use it for for exclusive events like the one that we're having today. Uh, just uh, events only and that kind of stuff in order to have something new, you know, that the people want to go to the event because it's the only place that they can get it or, or, or offers that you that you have in today. Well, I, I wish that it was available here because I actually it's probably my third favorite cigar from Placencia, to be honest. Uh, Thank you. I, I love it. You know, it's a it's a great. I want to say like a you know early or a late afternoon cigar. You know what I mean? Not the first cigar of the day, but the next cigar of the day. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I really, I really enjoy this stick. Ben, have you have you had this stick yet? I haven't. We got three to try, and I guess this is the third one that you're smoking. So <laughs> this is the name on it. I said I forget that I'm gonna smoke. Yeah, I mean, but um. I just had to make sure it was good enough for you to smoke. Okay, That's I all. appreciate it. Three <laughs> attempts. <laughs> so let's see. We have some other questions, Nestor. Um, from Brent. Brent asks, he says, your family's been growing premium tobacco for companies for five generations. What made you want to create your own line in the Placencia? And what can we expect from the next blends in the Alma series? Ah, very good question. Uh, I, I think I talked a little bit in the past uh, about this. We figured out that we were missing the best part of everything, you know, that we were that we were uh, talking to the final consumer and, and get this get this uh, kind of reaction when they when they tried of our cigars. We said we want we want our own brand. I want the people know the history of my family, not because of ego, just because of the hard working that they've been that the they, heart. they put the, it's part of it. Yes. The, the that heart that part of that and everything that we learned, we put into the cigars in order to in order to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Because it's a hundred percent on us. It's just that the Placencia name have to be the best of the best that we can that we can that we can produce. We have a specially grown tobacco, organically grown tobacco that we only use for these cigars, but we don't use for any other cigar that we make. We age the cigars in different ways, a longer time, in order to have this complexity, this full flavor cigars full flavored in, in, in all the blends. 
And uh, so we put everything that we know in those cigars. And there's a lot there's a lot of things coming up in the future that we have in the pipeline, just getting ready for for the right time to release it. There's, there's going to be a lot of uh, new Placencia. But we, we don't want to overflow it in the market, you know, launching a lot of products uh, one after the other one. We want to take time because we believe that, we, that we're building, that we're growing and making icons in the industry. You know, I, I just want one line that, you know, the lifespan for two years, one year, and then switch it for another line. I want all the lines to stay in the market and the people enjoy it for many years to come. And I think I think you're doing it right. I think each each of the lines that you have right now has made its own unique name for itself other than be like, okay, this is a, another Placencia cigar. It's like the Alma Fuerte, the Alma del, del Fuego. All of them are, are they stand on their own. So I think you're, you're doing it. I think you're doing it the, the right way. Thank you very much. Appreciate I'll, it. I'll ask. I'll ask a question. I don't know. Again, if you can't answer, just numbers. I, I'm just super curious. How many people work under under the Placencia name? How many families how many, are to make forty how many million people? cigars a year? Uh huh. How many people have to be involved? Well, we are a big. We're a big group. We're like a seven thousand five hundred people in the peak. Of the growing season, uh, and then year long we're like about six thousand people. So wow. it's a big responsibility. Big it's responsibility. a little city. It's <laughs> a little city. We're, we're spread. We're spread away. We, we have two factories in Nicaragua, two factories in Honduras, different places where we grow the tobacco. Uh, so we spread. We spread a little bit. Uh, but it's a big responsibility for for our team. So our main That's... goal is to secure their job for them right now. Well, we're gonna try to help with that today. We're gonna try to help secure. Thank you very much, man. One cigar, <laughs> one cigar at a time. Once the, that's, that's all, it. That's all it needs. So we got another good question from Jake. Jake asks, "What goes into selection of your tobacco? What leaves make the cut for wrapper? Um, what percentage that are good enough to be wrapper, etc.? Talk about your selection process for leaves and how you grade and rate." The selection, the selection comes uh, from the fields at the beginning. You know, we have different farms. And we know exactly which are the best soils, what kind of soils, what kind of fertilization those soil has. And when we when we have, when we see them, because we're on the fields every day, we're seeing this tobacco, how they're developed. So the best tobacco we put into different barns, the, the tobacco that is not that we feel, you know, like everything or have a problem with the disease or something, we put it aside. Then we have that, we put the tobacco in the curing barns. We have a special curing barns where we grow, where we have temperature, humidity, air movement that we control. Then we have that those tobacco. We make a little selection. We put the tobacco in the fermentation piles. And then we and then we go into the selection, leaf by leaf. And then the best leaves are the ones that are gonna go. We select them by seco, viso, ligero, by the texture. And we start seeing those tobaccos in order which which are the ones that have their, actually the main, the, the quality that we're looking for, for the cigar that we're gonna grow, that we're gonna use in our plant. In, the, in, in, in all the cigars that we make, because I think we grow enough great tobacco for the blend, for the blend that we make, for the Placencia, for the Placencia brands, and also we sell tobacco to a lot of to a lot of other manufacturers. How much? Actually, uh, well, I have a question. Uh, it's that, just a follow up. What Kevin asked, but <laughs> finish your. Well, I, before we go to Kevin's, let's go to let's go to mine because uh, I'm just curious because it all it all it all makes sense. How much tobacco do you grow? I mean, put if you can, can you put a number on it? Like, we grow, we grow last year five point five million pounds <laughs> of tobacco. And, That's a lot. Uh, of but, but we have, we, we grow Atlanta seed. This is the most that we grow. We grow uh, Connecticut Connecticut seed as well. Uh, we we start growing uh, some broadleaf. And these are the train the, the 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 main three varieties that we grow, and a little bit uh, here and there for tests or uh, uh, limited editions that we that we gonna release, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, but again, we have a great a great group of people that are working with us. We make our own seeds. We more, we make our own hybrids. Uh, we've been doing this for many many years. We 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 start with the basic criollo seed, some Corojo, some H two thousand. 
we put it, we cross bred, we want to adapt to the seeds in the weather conditions and the soil condition that we grow. And uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. It's a Fair lot me. of fun. Eh? Every day, every day is a learning, is a learning experience. Every crop is completely different than the crop before. So you have to make decisions. Uh, you never get bored. That's, that's what I love about this industry. It's not a recipe book. You know, you have, yeah. the, you have the base, gay line, guidelines, but then you have to make decisions all over. And how we can improve our, our work, how we can improve our growing. We always experimented uh, with different kind of organic material that we add into the soil, different fertilization, different ways of ferment, fermented tobaccos. You know, we, we added a drip irrigation system, you know, that we add fertilization and products into the into the fields, uh, crop rotation, what kind of crop rotation is better. There's a lot of experiment experimentation. In the years, guys, I can tell you that we have spoiled a lot of tobacco, man, and, and I'm proud of that. I'm very proud of that because because of that, we, we keep learning. That's, that's, a, that's a, I mean, just a ridiculous number when you think about Oh, that's a lot of tobacco, a lot of tobacco. So Kevin's question, which Ben was trying to, to ask, uh, with catering to over 30 cigar companies, uh, other than Placencia, was there ever a conflict of interest with using certain types of tobacco blends or quantities of products? Uh, not not really. What we use, we know we, we have the specific tobacco that we're just going to use for our, for our blends, you know, for our cigars. And, uh, and especially the organically grown, the organically grown tobacco is the one that that is proprietary for us. That will never use that tobacco for another brand that is not Placencia. So it is the, it's the way that we use it. And if some people want us to, to grow their, their variety, we do it for them. You know, we, we, we have done that in the past for, for, for people that we grow, that we grow the tobacco and sell the tobacco leaves for people to make them, for they can make their cigars. Fantastic. Frankie from the Bakersfield Gentleman says the Alma Fuerte is so good. It uh, is. Hard to argue with that statement. Um, uh, Jake has a really good question. This question comes up a lot in these in these live broadcasts that we do. Outside of Placencia cigars, what are some of your favorite cigars to smoke? <laughs> good question. Good question. I love, you know, I love the, the, the blend that we do it for Rocky. I love the blend that we do it for Alec Bradley, the Monte Cristo Espada. But those are cigars that we make, so you know, so we know what is what is on those cigars and this and that. But I always, I, I, I always try in other people, other people's line. I tried uh, David of Nicaragua. I, I love that blend. It's an amazing blend. Uh, Padron, amazing cigars. Puente, you know, it makes uh, Hemingway Puente. You know, it's a it's a great cigar. Uh, Oliva Series B. Another great cigar. Uh, so you know, I, I always tried what what is in the market and uh, tried uh, Hoya Nicaragua, like Antonio, uh, Liga Privada from Drew. You know, there's a, there's amazing uh, uh, great cigars in the market, and, and I try, and I love to try it because I think this is the best time for cigar smokers. There's a, a lot of great cigars in the marketplace, and I always said. Guys, I think I'm getting, I'm, I'm low in, in, uh, in battery in my cell. I apologize for that. But let me, let me see if I can try, if I can try to get into the, into the computer. No problem. While you're doing that, we're just going to do a short commercial here. Um, <laughs> so remember, guys, if you purchase any five Placencia cigars, you're going to get one of the Reserva 1898 European exclusive. But wait. So wait, there's more. If you buy any 10 Placencia cigars, you're going to get three of the 1888 European exclusives at no cost. All of that can be purchased at Luxury Cigar Club. Again, that deal is only good while we are live. Um, there was a little bit of confusion. There is a sampler with a Placencia ashtray on our website. That does not count towards this, this deal. Um, so make sure you purchase the right stuff. I think we also have some Placencia matches and some stickers and some swag to throw into those boxes. Um, so uh, hopefully Nestor is going to find uh, a charger for his phone. Um, keep the questions coming, guys. Hopefully we can get Nestor 
to answer those questions for us. Ben, how's that? Uh, how's that Panatella going for you? That Alma de Fuego. Yeah, well, it's a problem with it. it's getting very short, <laughs> and, which has always been an issue with this cigar. It just it's really good, and it. And I'm a faster smoker a little bit, so usually it'll last me about an hour. Some some members can probably squeeze an hour and a half out of it if taking it really slow and some people 45 minutes um someone someone asked in our private members chat ben the flavors that i'm getting on this it, it's definitely a medium a medium stick um i'm back i'm, getting, I'm back sorry for that you're back? you're back okay good good no problem i was just talking about the flavors i'm getting on this reserve i'm getting a I don't know. I want to say like walnut, um, fig, or some sort of, of grape or raisin. Maybe it's a really, really pleasant cigar. Um, really liking the cigar. So welcome back. I'm glad you found the charger. It sounds like. Yes. <laughs> um, one of our members has asked. Uh, let's see, Luxor Development Group. I'm not exactly sure who that is, but. Uh, they're asking which one is more smooth and creamy from the entire Pl Placencia line. So out of the Placencia line, what's more smooth and creamy? Uh, I think Alma de Campo. I think Alma de Campo can bring you that creaminess. Uh, that's a medium, medium plus cigar. That is good for, for every time in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the day. I think that give that can give you the creaminess, and uh, I love, I love, I really like that blend for you know yeah. for every every time every time in the day, and also and also the reserva the sense of reserva original it's a little bit milder, but it's a very cool flavor. So you can go with the, with this too. And the, the the reserva original was the second one, right? That's a fantastic stick. I love it in the the Churchill. I really like that cigar in the Churchill. Great cigar, amazing stick. Um, thank you. Adrian, thank you very Adrian, much. Says, Adrian asks, can we set up a factory tour for luxury cigar club members? That's a a hundred percent. Count on that. Count on that. Okay. When, this, when this is over, you know, you welcome anytime. All right. We're going to do it. There you go. Adrian, start saving your pennies so we can buy the plane ticket. <laughs> uh, here's a question from Tony. Tony actually, uh, works with Luxury Cigar Club uh, in our warehouse, helping with packing and shipping and receiving and things like that. And he asks if he asks, do you feel if Cuban cigars are worth all the hype, or is it just not as good as it was in the '50s and the '60s? Uh, good question. I think I think there's a lot to improve over there. There's some amazing cigars that I've been trying, but those another cigar that hasn't been that good. Um, I think still some great cigars out of that. Uh, I don't like to talk bad about any any other producer and stuff like that. So, so give, give it a chance. You know, some some you, you might find a good good cigars in that in that. Uh, uh, did selection. they did they not uh, really develop or uh, evolve their production in the past few decades, or did, do you feel like they they did make some changes that are positive? I think I think they improved the the draw problem that they have. Uh, so now, now it's uh, now it's better, uh, but I think there's uh, they need more tobacco. Uh, they have issue with that, uh, but there's still amazing producers that we know in Cuba. They're still growing amazing tobacco, and they're they're working hard, and uh, and amazing people. We just had the visit of a group of um, Cuban tobacco growers uh, beginning of February this year. So that was a great that was a great ex exchange of uh, knowledge and and a good people, man, good people, amazing people. And my dad is Cuban, so you know I, I have a lot of respect for these guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nigel, Nigel's one of our members. Great guy has a has an awesome ashtray collection, by the way. Um, Nigel asks, "What's your favorite stick and why?" I, I'm assuming he's asking, "What's your favorite stick from the Placencia line?" And why is it your favorite? Well, good question. I I love them all. You know, it's it's what when you ask with uh, like with your kids. your kids that you love the most. So oh, I can tell I, you very quickly. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what no, if you, I, if you, I think 
everyone have the, 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 the right time in, in the day to enjoy it. Right now I'm enjoying the Alma Alma Fuerte because it's it's, uh, it's almost 7 p.m. over here. So I like it. I like that in the evening, uh, that cigar. Uh, but I, I, I try them all. Uh, before this, I got the Alma del Fuego. In the morning, I started with Reserva Original. Then I tried the, the Alma del Campo. Uh, yesterday, I had the Cosecha 146. And, uh, and uh, the Reserva 1898, you know, I tried that pretty often as well. Uh, in the after lunch and that kind of stuff. So there's there's always a right time in the day to enjoy one of them. Let me I'm going to I'm going to force you a little bit on on this. If you if you were stranded on an island and you could only have one Placencia <laughs> cigar with you, which one would you choose? Cuz I know which one of my kids I'm just kidding. I would take all my kids. But <laughs> but these are not your kids. I know they feel like your children, but which one? If you could only smoke it for the rest of your life, which if one I, would you do? For the rest of my life, which one? I think it's Alma Fuerte. Yeah. Alma Fuerte. I would stay with Alma Fuerte. And what, uh, which Alma Fuerte? Say, yeah? Which Alma Fuerte? Which Alma Fuerte? The, the, the uh, 6 by 60 hexagon shape. The hexagon, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't know if I could argue too much with that. I, uh, it's a great <laughs> stick. I, I, I would take an Alma del Fuego. Uh, again, that I, I'm a, I'm obsessed with that Alma Tepe, and uh, you don't Man, see it I, a lot. I will I will I will spend my life with any other blends that we're doing. But if you ask me for just one, because <laughs> I, I I love them all. I really love them all. Every time that we release something, we have to absolutely be in love with that with that blend. You if you don't love it, you can't expect anyone else to love it. Guys, you cannot fake passion, my friend. There's there's something that you cannot fake, and passion is one of that stuff. And we and we have the people, you know, we hire for passion. We we can teach everybody else whatever, you know, but passion you cannot teach it. It has to be within you. So, you know, that's that's the most important thing. And when you have passion, you're gonna do the best every time that you can. Nope, I love it. We have another question about a luxury cigar club exclusive cigar. Um, about me and Ben and David blending the cigar. So I guess I guess we're taking a trip down to, to visit so we can blend an exclusive. Welcome. You're I'm welcome. I'm not a blender, but sure. I, I can I can taste them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it's gonna it. be a lot of fun for sure. Absolutely. <clears throat> well, that's the fun part. When you're creating something, guys, the the, the excitement that we have uh, right now, I, I've been loving this all my life. But when we came with the brand and the excitement to create the blends, the packaging, the 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 message that we want to give. That's nothing to compare with that, you know, because it's so so much excitement in creation that you cannot, you know, you cannot, you cannot explain that. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. So I, I have a question myself because I'm I'm curious. It's something that I would probably buy immediately if it if it ever was released from from you guys. But do you do you have anything in the works? And if you can't if you can't give me any details, that's fine. But maybe like ultra premium, something in the Forty dollar plus range or thirty five dollar plus range with a lot of age, a lot of really high premium, the best of the best, everything. Is there anything in the works like that from Placentia? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. We are, we are, we are almost ready for that. But this uh, COVID thing uh, delays everything. But we have, we have, uh, we have stuff like that for sure. We have uh, age tobacco. We have. Uh, different locations that we haven't released that we've been growing tobacco for many years uh, oh. saving that uh, uh, amazing stuff it's in the pipeline amazing stuff and, and, and a special variety of tobacco as well out of the existing line what what tobacco or what cigar or what line has the most age in the tobacco the alma alma fuerte alma fuerte have an uh, average of 10 years 10 year 10 year old tobacco uh, this wow. is the one that has the most average. The most Excuse me. The average. So what? What's the oldest? What's the oldest leaf? Yeah, we it? have we have something. It's like a nine year, 11, 12 years. You know that kind of stuff. Amazing, amazing. So we all know already. The Placencia is a family run business, and Kevin has a question. When you actually started working for Placencia Cigars, what what did you do? Were you uh, 
picking tobacco leaves in the field where you <laughs> yeah. well, start, uh, good question i started in a very very young age you know my father put me to work in a very young age so i have done i have done everything i started in the fields you know picking tobacco uh putting the lap putting the putting the soil together with the stem of the tobacco uh sowing the tobacco making cigars making pilones packaging the packaging the cigars I have done everything, but when I started you know, formally after I, I finished agriculture school, I started directly at the farm. You know, I started uh, bringing new methods. You know, learning first, keep learning. But I started with the drip irrigation system. I started with the uh, controlled climate curing curing uh, barns, curing tobacco barns, uh, and my my the best project that I'm very proud of is the organic grown tobacco. Because I, we were the first one, still the only company in the world that is being grown, that is growing organically grown tobacco. So, what does it, what does it really mean? So, just no pesticides, yes. or natural that means, that means that, pesticides. That you cannot use any any chemical pesticides. So everything has to be organic. Uh, what we do, we we grow. It's a fascinating process because we do we grow our own uh, organic fertilizer. We do vermicompost. Which is known by the earthworm, you know, is that uh, is the all the residues on the farm. We put it to compost. We give it to the earthworm. The earthworm produce the the humus. We give it to the soil, and it's very it's very uh, accessible to the to the to the tobacco roots. So it releases the nutrients. So the tobacco glow, grows uh, stronger, richer. The flavor is amazing, and we added a lot of organic material to the, all the tobacco that we grow, because it's I, I I'm a I'm a big believer that. You cannot make great cigars without starting with great with great tobacco at the beginning, and everything everything starts at the farm. So the fact that we are growers, that we grow 100% of the tobacco that is in our cigars, I think that makes a big difference because we know exactly where the tobacco come from, what fertilization, the 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 days that the tobacco was in the fermentation, the temperature that came into the fermentation pile. We know everything everything in that in those cigars. Yeah. So let me well, let me clarify. Try to clarify one thing. You said a uh, you Placencia uh, brand is the only brand that uses the or, the organic uh, tobacco. So when you roll for other uh, companies, you use the regular uh, the regular tobacco, or you also use that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, we call it the conventional tobacco. This is the one that we use the most. That we grow the most. Well, we add organic material also in the conventional tobacco. It's not 100% organic, but we use a lot of organic fertilizer in the conventional tobacco, because I believe that we that you have to care, take care of your soil, and the soil, the way that you take care of that is adding, not just extracting out of the soil. Yeah, that's that's the secret. Um, Kevin, Kevin had another good follow-up question, which I like. Since you've done basically every job at the at the you know at the operation, what what's your favorite what's your favorite task? Is it in the is it you know? Ah, uh, good, very good question. I I love them all, but my heart is on the fields. Yeah, uh, selecting the right field, doing the right thing on the fields, uh, planting the tobacco and, and seeing that that beautiful plant, that amazing plant. I, I always said that tobacco is an amazing plant because in the same plant you can have different different strength and flavor profile within the same plant. And that you get that plant and put it into different locations, different soil conditions, different microclimate, you have a completely different taste. So it's amazing. So my heart is on the farm on the farm. So what's generation six of Placencia look like? Well, good question. Good question. Uh, I think that they're already there. I have uh, one daughter and three boys that I that I that I'm doing the same thing that my dad did with me, uh, taking taking them to the farms, explaining what we do and why we do it. Uh, my sis, my daughter, she's uh, 20 years old. She's studying uh, marketing, so she she already uh, uh, said that she has some interest in uh, joining us. Uh, and my boys, I know I take it, I take them to the farm. Uh, we love horses, so we ride horses on the fields. It's a beautiful life, guys. It's a beautiful life. Sounds like it. It is. We will, we will come to check it for 
for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Well, Nestor, I think we're about an hour long here, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and shut down. I just wanted to, to thank you so much. You know, we, we are always so appreciative. We know how busy you are and what you're doing. And, and to take a little bit of time out of your day to talk to us and our customers and our members, uh, it means the world. And it's one of the most important things for me and for Ben and for David in this community of cigars is to keep the community close. And um, you doing this for us, uh, it, only, it only draws us closer to you and your brand and what you're doing as a company. And, and we're very grateful for you taking a little bit of time. We're very grateful for the cigars that, that you guys are, are making and, uh, and what you're doing for the industry. Guys, uh, I really appreciate that. And I, I want to thank you guys to, to let the people know about us, you know, that we exist, what, we, what we're doing. So I want to take, I want to take this opportunity to, to thank you and all, your, and, your, and all your members and all your customers uh my my final words is that keep enjoying life no matter what happened you know during these hard times cigars is a great companion for these hard times so we have to be grateful for the things that we have and we still have a lot of things you know more than we more than we know and uh keep enjoying life keep enjoying life with great cigars with great companions even though we cannot be so close right now but uh but it's just amazing life that's that's it's the best advice life. The best advice ever. It really is, you know. I, uh, every cigar you get to smoke is is uh, it's the best, right? I mean, it's it's uh, we're so grateful for the opportunity and and we're grateful for what you're doing again. So thank you so much for joining us. We are gonna come visit you. Thank you. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna we want to see it all. We want to see it all. So um, for thank sure. you. Again. We're gonna get we're gonna get the broadcast ended. Um, so we'll talk to you very soon. Uh, and everyone that's watching, thank you. Remember, we uh, uh, you know the next few orders that come in, we'll still get the benefit that we're offering with the with the free cigars, the, the Reserva 1898, the European exclusive. So get your orders finalized and in. And everyone, have a fantastic night from Luxury Cigar Club and from Placencia Cigars. We thank you all. Good night. Thank you, guys.